This is So Like You Know, the podcast your mother warned you about. Are you crazy? These kids could really hurt themselves with this stuff. Oh, God, I thought that was absolutely dreadful. On Spreaker? Yeah, on Spreaker. We keep having that problem. Yeah, I even tested it before I hit live. So, I don't know. I fixed it now. It auto-muted on its own for some reason. Weird. So, thanks, JP. Um, but yeah, haven't said anything important yet, luckily. Um, so, we love you. Um, but if you guys like us, don't forget we do a live show every Thursday, 9.30 Mountain Standard Time, right here on Spreaker.com slash S-L-Y-K Radio. We're also on Facebook and Twitter at S-L-Y-K Radio. Facebook is where we do our live feeds. So if you guys don't want to just listen to our lovely voices, you can also hear our pretty faces. What? No. (laughs) See our pretty faces? See our pretty faces. I mean, I guess you could hear a face... But I imagine it's very squishy sounding <laughs> and moist. Moist. Like, just the human body. Like, I heard an audio recording a while back. The human body is just very disgusting sounding. Mm hmm. Sometimes Tony will rub his eye, you know, like, and he'll, like, do it with the palm of his hand. And his, like, I don't know if he, like, broke something when he was younger or something, but it cracks. Oh! That's it's nauseating just, sounding. It like, gives me the, like, goosebump every time he does it. Like, if I'm, like, zoning out and he starts doing it, you know, it catches my attention. I'm like, ooh. Yeah. Yeah, I don't blame you. That would, uh, that, I think that'd make me want to get. Do not. <laughs> uh, balls should never pop, be they eyeball or crotch. Right. <laughs> so... Um, oh, I should crack this beer. Like it, like, it sounds like maybe he, like, chips some of the bone off of his, uh, his brow, no? And so it's just, like, chunks of it rolling around in there. That, uh, that's pretty gross sounding. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know what it is, but yeah, that's, like, that's what it sounds like. Ew. <laughs> just, just ew. <laughs> ew. <laughs> ew. Ew. Like, oh my god. Um, <laughs> yeah, so... But, as you guys know... Instead of chipping and cracking things, yeah. you don't want to do that to your phone. <laughs> well, I was going to tell them about the beer, but that's oh, a good idea, though. Beer. No, no, no. Let's I like hanging. Yeah, let's talk about this real quick, then. Because... Uh, did you crack did you your guys, phone? <laughs> uh, I mean, the Gorilla Glass. Highly, highly suggest getting a Gorilla Glass. <laughs> It's your phone screen. Yes, it cracks, but that's replaceable. Um, (laughs) If you guys are looking to protect your $600 investment, then you should pick up your hands 
today is a handy device that attaches to any phone without without with a case. You need a case for this. Uh, the with a case without any modifications, allowing you to strap it to your neck, your wrist, your purse, your backpack, and it keeps it from falling to the ground. Uh, it's only four ninety nine with free shipping, so you can go online to our website, so like you know dot com, and click the link and get your hands today. That's Hangins, H-A-N-G-I-N-Z. Hangins. Hangins. So. So, okay, now you can tell them about the beer. Yeah, um, but, you know, if you got your Hangins on, it'll help protect you when you're drunk. Keep your phone <laughs> from falling to the ground while you're drinking some delicious beer. Uh, we got some, we got some good beer. Um, from Six Noses Brewing Company. Wait, wait, right there. Boom, ain't that fancy? I'll put it in the little craft brew spot in a second. But is the bear black bear black <laughs> bear black? I'm mentally challenged right now. Bear back blonde ale with raspberries. Uh, but it's a six point three ABV, twelve IBUs. On the can we got ale with raspberries. This ale starts off with the base of our easy drinking and beautifully balanced bear back blonde ale. Then we age it over hundreds of pounds of real, actual, from a bush, red raspberries. The tart and slightly sweet raspberry character nestles into the blonde with a refreshing ambience um, and abundance. Not meant to overwhelm the beer aspect. This is the fruit beer for those who do n- and do not like fruit beers. So, mm. check them out. I'm not racist, JP. <clears throat> Just because I said black doesn't make me racist. It, it, like bear, bareback, African American would. I don't know. I'm done talking. Yeah, just yeah, stop, stop while you're ahead. No racist. That's what it comes down to. <laughs> um. <laughs> anyways, guys. So coming up next is Slick Feed. Where we geek on your week. Sorry. I'm so uh, sorry. I thought you were going to start, like, beatboxing. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> um, we got to make, make a new intro. We could use that. As a, as Ricky, 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 we can't talk. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty true of most of our shows. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a constant challenge on overcoming our incapability of speech. Yeah. That was a pretty good sentence for someone who's incapable of speech. <laughs> uh, no, you're, uh... <laughs> what did you say you were? Mexicapable? I am, I am Mexicapable. <laughs> Holy crap, speaking of Mexicapable, you guys know Benny. Uh-huh. Um, he brought me this tequila. Um, oh, yeah? From somewhere in Mexico, because they went on an awesome trip. It is a aged vanilla tequila. Ooh. And it is so good. Um, somewhere in Mexico. I can hear me. It's <laughs> easier if I do it this way. Oh, yeah. um, but it's absolutely delicious. And vanilla tequila should be a perfect thing for everyone because it's wonderful. And I'm afraid to drink it too fast because I don't want it to be gone because it. I don't know if it's in the U.S. <laughs> Hi, Tara. Where? Where's the Tara? In the Facebook. I'm going to the Facebook so I can see the Tara. She's a terrorist. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Um, there it is. Cause I almost, I almost forgot. There we go. Wow, eight comments. I am sorry. I forgot to pull this up. <laughs> Going right here. Also, what's up, up Eric? What's up, Wayne? What's up, Josh? What's up, James? What's Hi, up, Tara? Yeah, there is. How come she's so loud and Bo is whispering? Uh, let's turn this up. Hopefully that's better. So, the problem is, I got the mic and I don't know the audio, but I can hear a shell, but the computer picks it up through the actual inline system. So... Everything's a little different. And you just gotta play with everything. I also can't turn up my too much because it picks up the fan. If I don't have the fan on, I die. I don't like dying. <laughs> yeah, it gets hot in that room. It does with 
two computers running and a light bulbs. Light bulb. <laughs> light bulb. LED. Uh, this one is LED. Those are CFL. But that would make well, LEDs would turn that into like a forty dollar fan. <laughs> a what? Forty dollar fan. Mm-hmm. It gets a little expensive, but that's that's how it goes. Yeah, oh, but oh. they like they they stay cooler and they last a lot longer. I don't know. We have LEDs in the lot of the house, and it's actually kind of nice. It's like a, a bright light, but it's soft at the same time. Yeah. With that white light. No, that makes sense. Let's get this up out of there and bring this. There we go. Maybe that's a little louder too. Um. So and Eric, you may not buy those six hundred dollar phones, but you know you need it. They take great pictures, and you do such awesome cosplays. Everyone should be taking pictures with your phone of you. That's terrible reasoning, but <laughs> that's what I'm going with. Um. Wayne says, "Die then." Need to hear you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to die. It's on Facebook. Don't tell me what to do. I don't know. I turned it up. So, I don't know. There's only so much I can do. Let's see. <laughs> can you turn me down? No, I only turn you up. Um. Here, how about this? Is this better? So. You, oh, you're you facing the center of your desk. I just now realized that. Okay. <laughs> why, is he, why is he not using the boom mic? There, I am using the boom mic. Boom mic. Facebook mic. <laughs> oh, all right, cool. So yeah, they're all over the place. Gotta use the two, otherwise people can't hear crap. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Makes sense. That's a lot better. Cool. Sorry, video is super delayed on Facebook, so. It happens. It happens. I'm like, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyways. This is Slick Feed, where we geek on your week. Um, yeah, some exciting stuff to talk about in this section. Cool. Yeah, so uh, for over a century, uh, if you were in Canada, you have not been allowed to challenge someone to a gentleman's or gentlewoman's duel, uh, which is just a sad travesty that is, uh, have been taken out of our uh, so-called, you know, High tech, fancy, forward thinking world. I think they should be there. Progressive. Yeah, that's the word I wanted that didn't come to me. Um, but this week, the Minister of Justice and the Attorney General of Canada, Joy Wilson Raybould, introduced legislation that could remove the law uh, that banned it so long ago. Um, so the overall legislation legislation is actually based around removing outdated or unnecessary laws from uh, I think did they call Parliament over there something I don't know um, from their justice system. Um, mm-hmm. So and one of them being that I'm I'm not sure how that works in with the murder laws and stuff, but right. if if that would if they could allow a duel like. Like with swords and stuff, that would be amazing. I think that would be right. absolutely amazing. Uh, maybe not guns. Like modified, like it. The only reason uh, is because when dueling was a thing back then, guns were not as powerful, and right. you might be able to get shot with a gun, and it might not even make it through your clothes. <laughs> right. Exactly. Um, now it's pretty uh, much guaranteed. <laughs> right. <laughs> but yeah, like. I mean, I'm sure, like, yeah, some modifications to it. Um. But, I mean, like, I guess as far as, like, once upon a time, it was the progressive thing to do to, like, outlaw these kind of stuff, because it's so, like, I don't want to say primitive, because it's not really the word I'm looking for, maybe slightly barbaric, like, it, it's just very, like... It's aggressive, I mean, it's it's barbaric, yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah. heathen. And, um, and it's like once upon a time it was progressive to move forward from that I and mean, like but now I think you know we're also taking a step back and going well I mean there are ways we could get around this we could do this like I'm sure like a duel would be definitely like probably not kill the person there's <laughs> ways know? around this you just push them in front of a train train 
right. Um, I don't know. I think it'd be awesome. I I can think of so many people in this world I would love to duel. Yeah. I mean, hell. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it really would. I think they would have to change it so that it would have to be any kind of melee weapon. Right, right. And I would not go against anyone who is good at LARPing because I'm pretty sure Bill could kick my ass in melee. <laughs> or you. <laughs> at least I would hope so. My only <laughs> chance would be to charge you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you've got, you've got size on me for sure. Yeah. My dick's a little bigger. <laughs> um, can you move the laptop towards your right ear a little bit more? There we go. Cool. Uh-huh. You're in frame. Yeah. I know. I, I moved earlier to get my drink, and then I, I can't tell. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Wayne just says, uh, don't tell anyone where the bodies are buried uh, after okay. you push them in front of the train or figure out the I other mean, way to do it. It is Canada, and there are frozen lakes. You know. Yeah. Well, I mean, it. In all, you, you could try to go to the part of Canada where because of global warming, I mean, the permafrost is actually melting, mm-hmm. but it still freezes pretty aggressively over time. So, so you just dig it out, it permafrosts over, they'll never really be able to dig it out. And you're good to go. I mean, at least at least until the statute of limitations is out. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, to the pain, to the pain. <laughs> so yeah. Um, but the cool part about the law that hopefully will actually pass. I mean, the the major part is that they're looking for more aggressive uh, laws against sexual assault. So that's. I think that was really kind of the main purpose of this one, too. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, focusing on sexual assault and punishing people who really freaking deserve it. Maybe having a duel with them would be awesome. Like, like we have the mountain, and then against the pedophile. (laughs) Or something. I think that'd be great, you know? Uh, Treat him like the viper and just squish his eyes in. But that's that's just how I feel. Um... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, but you know, I mean, the things like that are happening. I'm sure you want to record it, which, you know, you you could potentially do with smart contact lenses. Yeah. So, there's multiple companies working on the smart contact lenses right now. I know Google has their hands on it. Uh, we've mm-hmm. discussed Sony having their part. I'm sure uh, multiple. Japanese what is companies the black, do. What is the Black Mirror ones? Is that's, that Sony? that's just a reference. Oh. Um, right. So, I mean, there's plenty of companies that want to mess with it. Um, so, I mean, there's there's plenty that could come out of it. I mean, you could obviously record your daily life. Um, if it were to record and save, and government that had access to it, it could be used for crime and punishment. Um, I mean, the cloud. You could look at clouds? <laughs> no, like, <laughs> record and it just goes to the cloud. Yeah. I mean, it, it would have to be something like that, unless they had yeah. some sort of massive storage device that was embedded in your skin. Um, right. which... Like you, yeah, it's like the Total Recall. The yeah, which which brings up the reference. So, so you saw my Black Mirror note. Um, it's called an episode to the entire episode is called The Entire History of You. Okay. Um, and so it's based around the human body has a chip in the back of the ear and then embedded contact lenses and it can record everything, analyze, record memories, go back to them. And it kind mm-hmm. of focuses on one couple, um, a cheating couple, and he gets a hold of her memories and they find stuff out. She gets a hold of his and they find stuff out and it's just... it. it it's a cascading shitstorm uh, would be the mm-hmm. best way to describe it. Um, I mean, if you guys have seen Black Mirror, you kind of know how the show can escalate and how amazing the storytelling is. And I really advise looking at that one in reference to the smart contact lenses. And they have a few other that are like that too. Um, 
There's... Yeah, that is one. That, one is on that. that is one show I have not checked out yet. It's it's definitely worth it. I mean, the first episode is awesome enough to capture you. You don't really have to like. You don't have to watch three episodes to get into it because it's an it, anthology too. So it was it wasn't it a BBC show and then Netflix picked it up. I think so. I'm not totally sure about that. And it has David Tennant in it, right? Uh, I not sure. It does Jessica Chastain in it. Okay. Maybe I'm thinking of a different one. Um. Hold on. Uh, David Tennant Black. I oh I'm wait, I I know Black. what you're talking about. It's like a, a horror drama kind of Brad, thing. Is it Broadchurch? Is that what it is? Yeah. Hold on. Church. Yeah, okay. Yeah, broad church. So mm-hmm. I I know what you're talking about. Another BBC. Got it, got it. But yeah, I, I think the Black Mirror was a BBC, and then uh, Netflix picked it up. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, which is it's just crazy. I, stepping real back, real quick to the dueling thing. Eric says he'd bring his own weapon: swords, pike, mace, or a flail. Uh, tough choice to pick on which one to use. Which I mean. The cool thing is, is if you're a badass and you have these contact lenses, you can record the whole duel for mm-hmm. prosperity or for legal purposes, wherever you need to do. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, oh, and back to Black Mirror. So Mark makes a good point. He says the Black Mirror episode where you can get blocked by everyone, like on Facebook, but in real life is pretty damn crazy. <laughs> so it literally what it does is it censors you from that person. So they become so blurred like out in your vision. There, huh? Yeah, like you can't hear them, you can't see them. Uh, I mean, you can still interact with them. You could just start like punching blurry people, but mm-hmm. anyone can block you. Um, and then there's another episode where they focus on like it's almost like likes. So if so many people like you, you're registered higher in society, and so you can get better jobs, live in better places. But if you do the opposite and you get less likes and you're you're less enjoyed as a as a member of society, mm-hmm. it gets worse for you. Like in Fable. Yeah, yeah. Where the the town has their opinion of you. Yeah, and, and make sure you never kill anyone's chicken. Yeah. <laughs> you can kick them, just don't kill them. Yeah. Um, so I mean, it's it's a good reference point. So if you guys um, kind of want a reference point on that, I suggest watching. Black Mirror. There is a lot that actually focuses around that. But the thing, too, is that... So, Google Glass was a thing, like, a year ago. Mm-hmm. Or two. And people were almost getting beat up over it. Because they were so paranoid about their privacy that they were willing to cause physical harm to another human being because they think anything they do in their life is that important. Um, but... I mean, that that's what was going on. And then uh, other more simple things where people were going into theaters and they had their Google Glass and they were being kicked out of the theater. But their glasses were f- permanently affixed to the Google Glass, so they couldn't take them off and enjoy the movie, which was kind of a mm-hmm. dumb thing on their part. But right. it's just one of those things that creates a whole bunch of stuff. So if you end up with these smart contact lenses, they'd almost have to have, like, blockers so you couldn't use them in theaters. You couldn't use them right. in certain places, which creates another issue because... Kind of like a Faraday cage, but that for... It was going to be exactly my point, is that, like, oh. bars in the U.S. and places like that aren't allowed to use any kind of signal blockers because it, it, um, there's certain rights, and then, like, the uh, FCC, um, mm-hmm. you can't block signal like that. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's it's an interesting concept. So you really just have to consider what smart contact lenses could do and how much control they're either going to be, you're going to be limited by, or how much freedom it's going to give everyone else. Mm-hmm. So, because I guarantee there's you there's... going to be that one person to ruin it for everyone. Oh, yeah. I mean, like... Um, like depending on the level of it and they start watching porn at work or there comes out with an app so that anyone walking around it just shows them as a naked person i mean (laughs) right so i mean you never really know where it could go from that point forward so it's just it's an interesting concept when you think about what the future can bring in reference to that kind of technology 
So, but yeah. Um, so if you guys liked that, it was kind of like a discussion part of the show. There's not really any notes on it, so I mean, right. do that every once in a while. Something you just want to bullshit on. So if you guys didn't like it, let me know. Um, and yes, Josh, you definitely need to check it out. It's it, it's awesome. It's very awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, but stepping back to some uh, technology of the past. Yeah, back to the future, man. Mm hmm. Uh, recently, Atari, the classic game co- console, has uh, confirmed that it will be manufacturing a new system. What? So, we don't really have a lot of information on that new system just yet, uh, but it, it, it has been stated that it's going to be PC based. Which, uh,. I don't know, what do you think? Do you think it'll be a console with like maybe a keyboard and mouse or Well that's that was think? that was my interest because like I read that PC based thing too and I was like mm-hmm. I I mean so that's the thing is I have like one of my friends Matt. He mm-hmm. said that he would buy a PlayStation if keyboard and mouse was a playable like game feature, like Call of Duty mm-hmm. or any of the games like that. If he could use keyboard and mouse he buy a PlayStation because there's a lot of other benefits to it, but he um, hates controllers. So, have you seen though? Like, you, I'm sure you've seen them, but they are like they're like the little plugins for your PCs, or I mean, maybe maybe a console could do it. But it's like the four button and like your hot buttons. Yeah, yeah. And maybe it's something like that, and like it is Atari, so maybe it's like a joystick and then you have like a hot buttons pad or something. Mm-hmm. It's very plausible. Wayne says Linux Steambox of sorts would be his guess, which, I mean, is very plausible. Mm-hmm. Um, like, uh, so something I found out when I was researching this is that, you know, um, Atari is actually owned by a parent company that actually owns like Bandai and Namco. Um, Mm -hmm. so if that's implemented into the game system, um, I mean, we're looking at titles like the new Tekken 7, Dark Souls, The Witcher 3, so major titles, um, Mm -hmm. that are very graphically demanding. So, I mean, we could be looking at, I mean, if it's a, if it's a strong, smaller system, like, like a Steam box or a Linux base or anything like that, we could be getting a pretty strong... PC mouse system that could function on your TV, which is awesome. And it's Atari, which makes it all awesome because everyone wants the Atari. Everyone who's retro and old wants the Atari. <laughs> uh, I mean, like, I don't know. I feel like even the, the new people, like the young'uns would want it too. Like the Nintendo Switch, like, was a kind of a big deal with the younger generation. Dude, I want one so bad. Uh, the thing is, <laughs> I don't want to spend $300. <laughs> Right. I'd probably spend two hundred dollars, but I don't want to spend three hundred dollars. Yeah, dude, I don't even know two hundred, maybe one fifty. I'd spend. I like the Zelda games that much. <laughs> I know. I know. I just. Yeah. No, I can understand that. I mean, it, you guys have a PlayStation already, so I mean. Yeah, we have a PlayStation. It, can we talk about maybe getting an Xbox just because there's some exclusive games mm-hmm. for Xbox and. I don't know. I don't particularly hate the system. I do think PlayStation is better. Yeah. So but, I mean, um, I, I I'm a little better with the with the Expo now. That's why I don't say Expo so often anymore. Um, but I mean, I still want the Switch. I mean, it's got my interest. Um, right. Malcolm says the Switch is great, and Josh says Zelda would be the only reason he would buy it. It yeah. really that would be the only reason for me too. I mean, yeah, the, that is really the only reason I would. I want it. It's it's essentially a strong tablet, super strong mm-hmm. tablet that mm-hmm. plugs into your TV. So I mean, <laughs> I mean it, it's cool to have the controllers and stuff like that, but you could get away with doing emulators too. I mean, but you mm-hmm. won't be able to get the Zelda thing. So it's just it's this back and forth of shit. <laughs> so right. I don't know. I, Something tells me I might... stick to not buying any new consoles now. I have been (laughs) getting so much spam email recently because I've been signing up for, like, everything trying to win a Switch. (laughs) (laughs) Like, my... Luckily, I have, like, a spam internet... Or a spam email, like, everyone should. 
And yeah, I sign up like massively, but I'll probably get like, I'm pretty good about doing my filtering, so this may not sound high to some people, but I probably get like 35 emails a day just from spam after trying mm. to find someone that I can win a switch with. <laughs> Well, you know, yeah. you never know. Um, um, Malcolm, Malcolm says, "Oh yeah." Oh, go ahead. Uh, Malcolm says he wouldn't even buy he wouldn't buy the Switch over a PS4. Um, which I mean, I wouldn't either. I mean, it's, that's yeah, no. that's not an even trade off. Not at all. Not at all. Yeah, and like I said, I already we already have the PS4, so like, I'm not particularly concerned with getting a Switch. Like, I think it would be cool. Just because I do want to play Zelda, but at the same time, like, I don't know. My $300 is better spent elsewhere mm -hmm. right now. I mean, that's that's very true. I mean, and I got my PlayStation as well, and it's one of those things, like, there's enough games coming out that I, I still mm -hmm. love playing it. I love, I love playing Fallout, uh, Assassin's Creed. So excited mm -hmm. for the new Assassin's Creed. It looks fucking awesome. It's Assassin's Creed, and it's Egypt. Like... Two of my ultimate favorite things ever. <laughs> if if I were any good at sewing, I probably would have already done an Assassin's Creed cosplay. <laughs> right now, I'm kind of like basic bitch sewer. Um, uh, Malcolm says Zelda was the best game in a long time. And then uh, Josh says, on the console topic, how does ev everyone feel about Xbox One X? Um, so I, I don't know. I guess I don't know what that is. So the Xbox One X was the actual name for the Scorpio that we had talked about prior. Oh, okay. So the X Xbox Scorpio um, is really their chipset, and the name of it is the Xbox mm -hmm. One X, which one sounds stupid. They could have just gone yeah, with the Xbox X or the Xbox uh, 9. I mean, there's, there's the PlayStation. <laughs> PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, and then there's Xbox, Xbox 360. Um, and then Xbox One. Yep. <laughs> like, such a backtrack. Yep, and now it's the One X, so it's the Xbox One Ten. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or something. I, I mean, it, it's Whatever. goofy. Like, your names make no sense, X Xbox. Like, I'm sorry. They don't. I mean, and I don't understand their naming You'll system. You'll forever be X Bone. Yeah. Yeah, you've kind of stuck with X Bonex. <laughs> X Bonex. X Bonex. X Bonex. Um, it sounds like an like, like an X, like an that's like <laughs> one of your ex boyfriends. Oh, that's my X Bonex. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> um, I don't know. I it's supposed to be super powerful. I mean, mm -hmm. it push it pushes 4K at 60 frames per second. Um, it does. Uh, the 200 plus hertz for the TVs. I mean, it's supposed to be a really strong system with, that's very capable, but at the same time, it's... They, they haven't announced what games are going to be coming out with it. Right. And not to mention, we're at a point, almost, where most of the TVs that people can afford can't support mm -hmm. the higher-end video that's coming out of these. It doesn't mean it won't work for them, mind you. I'm not right, saying that. Work. It just won't work to like. Yeah, it's not going to look the glory. same quality. Yeah, I, I got I got a high fancy monitor over here, and I absolutely love it. It's a full gaming um, mm -hmm. monitor, and that's what I went for. But I paid 150 dollars, and it's only a 24 inch screen. Right. Whereas you're going to pay hundreds and hundreds, up to thousands for a proper TV that would support the 4K that you really want. I mean, it it'll. It'll level out eventually, but it doesn't really work for me. So, I, I don't know. I mean, maybe, maybe it'll whip it out, but what's ultimately going to happen is that PlayStation's going to come out with something better. Because that's what they do. Well, <laughs> they have PlayStation TV, too. Like, we have one. Mm -hmm. Like, that's, that's what we have in our bedroom. And, I don't know, it's kind of nice. Like, it's a pretty good picture. And uh, Normally we have the PlayStation 3 hooked into it. Uh, he decided to take it apart to clean it, though. <laughs> and yeah. it just hasn't gotten put back together. <laughs> yeah. You know. Uh, yeah. Uh, Tara <laughs> says uh, she'd rather get the Nintendo 64 and play Ocarina of Time again than get the mm -hmm. new Switch. I want both, because <laughs> the <laughs> new Zelda looks badass, 
and Ooh. I already have the new Zelda games. I have controllers. I have a power supply. I just don't have the N- Nintendo 64, <laughs> right. which is so sad. If anyone ever wants to send me a Nintendo 64, I would love you because mm-hmm. that would be amazing, and I want one bad, so bad. I had to sell okay. mine off back in the days when I was poor and needed money. Mm-hmm. It was a sad time in my life. <laughs> um, shit happens. <sighs> so, um, but, so, speaking of butts, now that I've said but, so if anyone okay. has seen Wonder Woman, it is the ultimate badass movie that I have seen this year. I've not seen it. It's fucking amazing. It's so <laughs> good. <laughs> like, five movies, and I'm like, I want to see so bad. But then Everything else can sit off to the side, go see Wonder Woman. <laughs> I know, I know. That one, and then, like, Pirates. That's really... On the top of your list. On the top of my list right now. I really want to see the new Pirates. Yeah. It's just... Yeah. I, I mean, but Wonder Woman was done so well. Yeah. I was like, I was like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's just... I mean, but Wonder Woman was done so well. I was like, I was like... It was just that feeling, you know, when you're in, you're in a movie and that badass points happens, you're like, yeah, kick its fucking ass. Mm-hmm. I was getting that, and I was like, I was jazzed up, and I was like, yeah, beat the shit out of him. <laughs> it right. was fun. It was a fun movie, and it, it captured me a lot. But one of uh, Gail Godot's scenes, who is absolutely amazingly beautiful, um, one of her scenes, she's in a ball, and she has a sword down the back of her dress, which everyone has seen in the trailers, that's not a spoiler mm-hmm. or anything. Um, that's actually becoming a trend right now, so women are taking the swords and putting it down the back of their dress, so just the handle and the cross guard is pointing out, um, mm-hmm. which looks amazing, but there's mm-hmm. only, there's, there's some issues I have with that. One, it's either splitting their butt cheeks, mm-hmm. and they're using their butt cheeks as some sort of holster. Mm-hmm. Shell don't fall asleep. Two, um, the they have some sort of awkward tail-looking thing <laughs> because the sword is poking out too far. Or three, they might have actually done it right, got a sword, cut it or broke it in half, and just kind of stuck it in there in their bra, which I think would be the right way to do it. I don't know, like, a shorter sword, you could do it. Like, I don't know, there's a bunch of videos of girls doing it and, like, un- like essentially unsheathing them and, like, their usable swords. Um, but they are. They're mostly shorter swords. And if you look at Gal Gadot's sword, like, it is. It's a one-handed short sword. It's not a long sword. But it's still, like, 34 inches. I mean, that that's enough to go yeah. into your butt crack and farther. Yeah, okay, it's like, I don't know, like, I feel like as long as you've got the flat of the blade and then it's secured in the top, it's going to stay there. It's not like it's going to twist around. So you got yeah, your sword? It, it might um, move a bit, but um, I don't know. Like. Okay, you or Brawley have to have a short sword. Yeah, I've, I've got a short sword. So All right, go I'm find gonna... it and stick it down your back. <laughs> It's all the way down. Well, not now, but do yeah. that, and you let me know if you either have a tail or you cut your butt cheeks. But, but that's the thing. Okay, so that's the thing. They're wearing they're wearing dresses though, so that's like the thing is like it doesn't matter. You can't see it. Yes, it feels awkward. I'm sure, but uh, like that's not the point of this though. Like the point of it is is she's a badass and oh she's hell yeah. Not whipped a sword out of the back of her dress. It's it's totally functional. It works it works for her, but her sword is too long. I, I've watched a lot of videos on YouTube about it. Uh huh. Um it where the sword ends is just slightly below her butt cheek. Yeah. So it it, it now, would and I, I, and this too, like I don't know what kind of dress she's wearing. Is she wearing like a skin tight dress the whole way down or does it have a bit of a skirt? Because most of the videos I've seen it's it's slimming on the sides, has a little bit of frill on the back, but uh-huh. the sword would still have to have a bit of a curve because she has one hell of a butt. So that's right. the problem is it would it would have to stop at a certain point or the dress would have to be perfect. Either way, I approve of this style. Just I'm just saying, do it right. <laughs> right. No, 
I just don't, don't be dumb about it. Like, don't hurt yourself for sure. And most um, likely, don't use a functional sword. It doesn't need to be sharp. Yeah, it, it's, yeah, this it is for style. Head. Aim yeah, for style, not for functionality. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't think that, like, really it looks all that good. Like, don't get me wrong. I love my sword. And, like, it's awesome. Like, I would love to just be able to wear... Um, Tara says, had said uh, Sting would fit, and then she says correction, Sting would not fit. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, and then too, like, you gotta think Gail Godot, she's like super duper tall. She's a big girl. Yeah. So, it's probably gonna work out. It's gonna be different for every person's body style and shape. Like, just like you said, she's got kind of a butt. Keep talking. So, I'm gonna grab my short sword. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I don't know, like, I, I just, I feel like, yes, it's entirely possible, it's functional for some, not everyone, like, it's, Gail Godot is the control, I guess, and everyone else is the, the experiment, and everybody, it's gonna be different for every person, um, in the discussion section it says butt cuts, um, like I said, don't be dumb. Uh, I just don't don't wedge it between your butt cheeks. Obviously, um, you probably won't be sitting down with a sword down the back of your dress. Uh, so, oh, no. This is my short sword. If you guys have probably seen it, I've posted it on Slick before. So, mm -hmm. one, I made this because I'm fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so you tell me. That's my underwear. Where am I? I'm over here. <laughs> That's the problem. Is it goes into my butt cheeks. And yeah, but don't stick it between your butt cheeks. It's n I, I can't. I would have to have a bigger butt. Uh, <laughs> but... And that's the thing. It's like... I don't know. Obviously, you're not going to be sitting down with the sword down the back of your dress. Like, it's just not going to happen. Like, it doesn't <laughs> work that way. Like, I don't know. Um, and then, yeah, don't stick it between your butt cheeks. Like, I don't know. Like, uh, with, like, with, like, fairy wings, like, you know how the ones that we made, they, like, go down into the back of my corset? Like, yeah. the, uh, one of the things I've been thinking about doing is you can make a pocket, like a padded, lined pocket in the back of your corset. Yeah, we that, talked about doing that. Yeah. Which I, I really think would be a great idea, because, uh, it would make it more comfortable. Yeah. Um, Instead yeah. of stabbing and, your and skin. And then, too, I wouldn't have the worry of them, like, coming loose, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe, maybe something similar. Like you said, like a, a, like a holster. You've seen, like, I'm sure you've seen them. They're, like, the the sheets that are just kind of, like, the tip. Just, just the tip. The tip. <laughs> uh, but you know what I mean. But it's, like, the long leather. Yeah, for the, mo the like, the claymores, usually. It's got, like, the club. Yeah, the cup on the bottom. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I feel like something like that would be fairly comfortable and uh, functional if you're going to be wearing a sword in the back of your dress, just as long as you don't try to sit down. Like, it's just, you know, not going to happen. All right, you got you got to try it with one of your swords and see where it sits on you. Yeah. Oh yeah. Because totally. stings but stings pretty short, and short. Tara's got a pretty big butt. So, <laughs> I mean. Um, that she's probably a good comparison for this whole thing. <laughs> right. Uh, well, and see, like, I don't know, like, my swords, like, yeah, they are, one of them is a short sword, but it's not that short. <laughs> yeah. Well, because I think, what, I think Wonder Woman's sword is about 34 inches, which is yeah. what this I'll, is. I'll measure mine, I'll measure mine, and I'll, I'll try it. I don't know, like, because I don't, I'm not like I wouldn't personally do it. Like I think it's kind of tacky. But that's only because you you understand fighting and <laughs> the stuff. The mechanics of the sword. Yeah, I mean yeah. you 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 understand what the sword is for. So yeah, it, yeah. But I mean, it was it was dealt with and in a covert like, situation. So it's a fucking movie. Yeah, so. exactly. <laughs> that's what it comes down to. Magic. Cinema magic. Yeah, and it and it looks amazing. So yeah. Either way, I suggest people try it. But my suggestion: get a sword and cut it in half. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
yeah like if you wanted to be functional and like just for look or just for looks and be able to function in the dress with it then yeah like get something that's shorter yep so yeah so there we go there's that one um but uh i suggest everyone go everyone go see wonder woman awesome movie it's still in theater shell go watch it i, I- I will. I just find yeah. some time in your stupid busy life and go watch Wonder Woman. I know, I know. <laughs> Do you have TV? Huh? Do you have Direct TV? No. Oh, I was saying you can rent it at home, but I have hippie cable. Yeah, fair enough. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Um. <laughs> but yeah. But, you know, between like working two jobs and you know jousting and all that fun stuff. Yeah, uh, you got stuff to do. It, 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 yeah, I got stuff to do. I got, I got, I got an adult. <laughs> so, uh, speaking of you, what do you do also? Um, you guys probably know, maybe you don't, um, I do cosplay, um, and you guys can follow me on Twitter and Facebook at Shellshock Cosplay, um, there you can see all of my awesome cosplays I've done in the past, stay up to date on events and, uh, different things I'm taking part of, see some works, work in progress, or some cosplays uh, that I might may be wearing for Denver Comic Con. I haven't done shit as far as Denver Comic Con. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, like I just I've been busy. Um, but I I I might I think I'm going to wear a couple uh, costumes that I've like either worn as like costumes for not conventions or um, like I've worn them for like other conventions, not Denver Comic Con. So um, but if you guys want to check that stuff out, you can follow me on my Facebook and Twitter, um, and, uh, you can check out some cool stuff that I'm going to be taking part of, um, like the Knights of the Tempest, we are your friendly neighborhood jousting troop out of Fort Collins, Colorado, um, we have a show coming up at the end of July at the Fringe Festival in Fort Collins, I do believe it is all three days, the 12th. 25th, 26th, and 27th. I think those are the dates. Um, come check us out. Come say hey. Be like, I know that girl. Yeah. Cheers on. I don't know. Whatever. Like, <laughs> stuff. Um, they are called the Knights of the Tempest. You can check them out on Facebook. And uh, while you're there, liking some pages on Facebook, you guys should uh, probably check out Club Cosplay as well. They are the nightclub by nerds for nerds. Um, the, uh, these guys are the Denver chapter, so check out uh, Club Cosplay Denver. You can go to their website, clubcosplaydenver.com. Um, they are putting on a big uh, uh, nightclub event uh, the first night of Denver Comic Con, actually. Uh, June 30th at the Summit Music Hall from 8 p.m. to 1 a.m. It's an all-ages show. Um, right now you can pre-order your tickets. The VIP is totally sold out for the pre-order, but the general mission is only 15 bucks. It'll be 20 at the door, and I do believe you'll be able to buy VIP tickets at the door. You just can't pre-order them anymore. Yeah, whatever um, works. But yeah, either way, okay. it's an awesome okay. event. Don't miss it. Yeah, yeah just come check it out. Well, well worth the money. <laughs> um... But I uh, also want to let you guys know we also have a YouTube channel that I would love for you to go over and just hit subscribe to because after DCC we're going to start posting a lot more stuff. Um, L-Y-K, YouTube. Wow, YouTube. I can't type. <laughs> Yow. Yow. Um... So if you guys could go there and like that for me, I would thoroughly appreciate it. Make sure you like the one in the link. Yeah. Click the link. Click the link. Do I need to point to a certain direction? (laughs) No, I don't think YouTube's even on here anywhere. Click the link. Click the notification bell. Do those things that other YouTubers say. um, Because we're going to try to get some more stuff uploaded as far as videos go. Um, Actual videos like the podcast feed. So, yeah. Um... But, uh, yeah, the other uh, Denver Comic Con after party, uh, well, it's not really mm-hmm. after party, during party, after the first day we want to tell you about is right before Club Cosplay, yeah. uh, you have the official Denver Comic Con after party, which is happening at the Paramount Cafe, just two blocks down from the Colorado Convention Center. Uh, it's free admission. Uh, 
And so, uh, yeah, it's going to be outdoor party and an indoor party with different DJs, different musical bands. So make sure you check that out as well. There is going to be all kinds of stuff happen. Um, and then once you're done there, go road over to uh, Club Cosplay because you can hit both up and Club Cosplay goes all night. Well, it's about two, but still yeah. super awesome. Uh, one of the cool things about the Denver Comic Con after party that I highly like, if this is the only reason you go, um, go because they're awesome. The fabulous Boogie Nuts are going to be performing, and they're just they're really a fun cover band that uh, does uh, most of their sets like as Star Wars characters. And they're just, they're a lot of fun. Like, Interesting. Highly, highly recommend. I got to see them perform at the, the Star Wars night I did at Elitch's. And, like, man, they were just having a good old time, and it was just awesome. I loved it. <laughs> um, but the DCC after party at the Paramount starts at 7, it goes till 10. Club Cosplay starts at 8, goes till 1. So highly suggest, check out both parties. Yeah, yeah, definitely worth it. So, yeah, coming up. Next is Slick Tube. Tube stickers. So we're gonna try to rock through this because she all needs bed. Yes. Yeah, I need bed too because. Probably looks really tired. I feel like I look like trash. Sorry, guys. Nah. And I plan <laughs> on going on a bike ride at like six in the morning. So sleep is good. Yeah. Um, but want to let everyone get everyone know who didn't know. Uh, Wit Studios, the animators in charge of Attack on Titan, recently confirmed that season three is set for 2018. Um, with it being confirmed uh, in the last bit of the anime, uh, just at the last episode, and then also by the anime's Twitter feed. Um, so hopefully, we're not going to have to wait three more years again uh, to have more episodes of Attack on Titan, which is amazing! Uh, if you guys don't watch anime, you're missing out. If you don't watch Attack on Titan, you are missing out! It's wonderful shell, you should watch it. Um, because it's lovely. But, uh, <laughs> Mark can says... I just, can, can I jump ahead real quick? Uh, yeah, yeah, you can jump ahead. Um, wham, 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 waiting three years. Um, <laughs> us Booly Cooly fans have been waiting 17, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Fair um, enough. <laughs> so, uh, Booly Cooly is getting a sequel fucking finally. <laughs> it did take a little while. Yeah, it's going to be on Adult Swim's Toonami, and it's set for later this year, maybe early next year. Um, this is from Adult Swim. They say, in the new season of Fooly Killy, many years have passed. Enter Hidomi, a young teenage girl who believes there is nothing amazing to expect from her average life. Soon enough, medical mechana is uh, attacking her town and Hidomi discovers a secret within her that could save everyone. Yeah. Um, so you guys can go and watch Fooly Cooly. I believe I saw it on Amazon and it, there was somewhere else. We, I know YouTube. we talked about it before. YouTube. Totally. That's like that's how I watch YouTube. Um, but yeah, YouTube and then I, I really do think it is like on our streaming service as well. Um, I'll, I'll try watching it more. Jen made me watch the first episode, and it was so boring. It, no, yeah, no. I'll give you that. The first episode is kind of like, what? It, like, you don't really know what to expect, and I don't want to give it away for those who haven't seen it, but, like, pretty much the second episode is where things get awesome. More than just someone getting hit with a guitar and yeah. a really strange boner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, oh yeah, you don't even know. You don't even know, yeah. So, um, but uh, speaking of anime, if you guys have not watched Food Wars, you gotta step up your game. It's uh, an awesome show with an excellent plot and anime food dishes that kind of make your mouth moist. It's so good. Like, it's, it's so delicious and described so well that mm. I want to make them. Like, I physically need to go to the store, buy the stuff, and make these. Like, they just sound so delicious. So Isn't there... I, I want to say I saw it floating around Facebook. There's a guy who has, like, a YouTube channel where he does. He brings, like, anime food to life. 
I have not seen that, but I'm going to look for that. <laughs> yeah, I, I want I want to say he's got his own YouTube channel, but I, I, I did see it on um, Facebook. Nice. Yeah, I'm going to look that one up. Because uh, yeah. th that food in there is so delicious. Like, they do this... The first food that he makes is... Uh, well, the first kind of, like, original food he makes is, like, it's mashed potatoes wrapped in bacon, like, cooked mm -hmm. into, like... I don't even know how to describe it. It's so good looking. It's mm. like meat soaked mashed potatoes, and it's just it, the way they just like draw it and describe it. You literally, your your mouth is watering from anime. My mm. mouth is watering even thinking about it. <laughs> so, <laughs> just yeah, I, I suggest it. But if you guys are interested and love that show, just like I do, um, I'm personally on my second round of watching it. Uh, season three is set to premiere this fall, so right. I'm excited. Woo! Makes me happy. Yeah, that's, uh, again, another one I have not checked out, but I do like food. Do it! <laughs> it's so fun. Um, um, some more animation news. Uh, I know we've talked about this before. We all know that uh, Nickelodeon is going to be bringing back Rocco's Modern Life. Along um, with uh, Hey Arnold and Rugrats? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. But it's more specifically about Rocco's modern life. Uh, sorry. Uh, but instead of getting a, like, another TV series, they're going to be doing a one-hour TV movie called uh, Rocco's Modern Life, Static Clean. It is written and produced by the, sh the show creator, uh, Joe Murray. And um, today they it's announced laundry that day I've is a very no. dangerous day. Today they announced that all of the original voice actors from the show are coming back as well. So, kind of exciting stuff. Uh, yeah, I don't recognize any of these names, but I mean, I know, we got... I know, I, I grabbed them just in case. The guy who to... does Rocco, Spunky, and Leon, um, who's Carlos Al Ales Rocky. Ales Rocky. Yeah. Either I way... I'm excited because um, like it literally, it is all of the cast from the original show is coming back to do the voices, and then they've also added. I know they also added a few new uh, characters and voice actors. So super awesome. Yeah. Um, can I just say I? When I remember when I was little. I feel like I had a slight crush on Doctor Hutchison. I, I know that's weird because she was an animal, but. <laughs> <laughs> That's if I'd have let that carry, I'd have probably turned into a furry. Possibly. <laughs> Glad I didn't. Um You know, life is weird. But either way <laughs> The uh Yeah, so I'm excited for Rocco's Modern Life, um and all the other stuff that's coming out from Nickelodeon, kind of the revamps. Hopefully they're just as exciting and they don't do too much of the CGI animation, so we'll see. Um, or the new well, CGI know, like, I don't animation. Know. I feel like I feel like Nickelodeon kind of dropped off the map there for a while, anyways. So like maybe they, maybe this will be their big comeback. Hopefully, I mean, if they could do that and bring back some of the game shows, like Temple of the Hidden Warriors or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hidden yeah. Temple. Uh, Hidden Temple. Yeah, Hidden Temple or something like that. Um, I love that show. I love that show. Like, uh, I so wanted to be on that show, and then like I would pretend like I was running around the house, and it was like. I always wanted to be on the Barracuda team, always. I, I, I can see that. I can see that. Especially now that you're, like, hopping on horses and battling people. I mean. Right? Like, I would run around the house pretending that it was, like, a course, and I could only step in certain spots, you know? Yeah. I was a weird child. I didn't yeah. have a lot of friends. That's all right. a lot. You still don't have a lot of friends in move No. <laughs> all right, yeah. you got friends, but you, you do move. I do. Yeah. And what's up, Jason? Also, I do say boner because Bo is in it. <laughs> yeah. And he's also a bit of a boner. Uh, sometimes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can be a little hard-headed. Mm. And I'm long. Or tall. I'm tall. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyways, so, yeah, Mark... What Mark's a long face. <laughs> Uh, I, long beard. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and 
Legends of the Hidden Temple. Thanks, Mark. Yeah. So, um, but uh, yeah. So speaking of being a kid, if you guys want to live that lifestyle, at least for a few days, make sure you head to Denver Comic Con. It's for everyone. It's coming up this June 30th through July 2nd. We're going to be there as a roaming media crew. Are you going to be there roaming? Better be. Um, if you guys want to come check us out, uh, we're going to be all over the place. Just either message us on Facebook. Um, hopefully we'll see some of you lovely people that we recognize, depending on how much cosplay you're wearing. You may not recognize me because there's a, a, I'm going to wear cosplay all three days, so long as I have time to make the other two. Or the other one. So I'm doing Reaper from Overwatch. Mm-hmm. I'm doing Eustace Bags from Curse the Cowardly Dog. And then a character from uh, another show that Hannah wants to do that I can't remember. <laughs> but she wanted to do it, and I watched some of it, and I enjoyed it. But it was enough that I was like, okay, I'll do that with you. I just gotta make a fez. Um, I have to make a fez, and I have to make the mask. Those are the okay. hard parts. <laughs> uh-huh. I have not decided totally what I'm gonna wear, but I really think I might do Jessica Rabbit, just because, hell, why not? Yeah. Um, and uh, I really wanna do Maya. Um, I wanted to get the top and uh, finish it. I just don't have the money or the time right now, so that is on the back burner. Yeah. Um, but uh, hey, we've got plenty of time for that. Uh, and then I was thinking maybe bringing Maddie out, and uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just gonna dig around. Maybe maybe Jesse. Maybe I'll just go fun. There you go. Like that one that I've been worn to a convention. Like yeah, maybe I'll do that. Yeah, and you wore Jessica Rabbit. What for Halloween, Halloween, and that was it. Yeah. So yeah, that's another good one. Yeah, I don't know. So, fun stuff. Yeah. So, super excited. Um, We're going to be roaming around. So, if you see a Reaper, assume it's me. Start talking to me like it's me. If it's not me, you had a conversation with a new excellent person. Um, Exactly. (laughs) Um, So, I don't really want to, like, rattle off some of the upcoming guests because, like, so this is crazy. A lot of guests have been called away for filming, so there's been a lot of cancellations at DCC. But they're also kicking ass in getting celebrities in place of those other celebrities. Yeah. Um, they've, they've been working really hard. Like, they, it, and it sucks because they get so close to the event. Um, but, like, what can they do? They can't control that these celebrities aren't getting paid thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars to go film a TV show or a It's movie, true. So. It, really, it really isn't their fault. And not to mention, this is a non-profit event. I mean, everything exactly. goes to Pop Culture Classroom, um, which is a great cause. So every all the money, I mean, goes towards, towards the right stuff. I mean, between paying people properly and going towards this organization, which helps get comics into the classroom to help, you know, young readers progress. So... It's an excellent event, so I mean, but at the same point, they can't folk fork out as much money. So just keep that in mind. I mean, it's not their fault when people get called away. I mean, it happens, but they really, they are really putting their their the right foot forward to try to make sure that the con is everything that it's supposed mm-hmm. to be for us and as exciting as it it was it needs to be. So and it's gonna be awesome. Like it is every year. Like I mean, honestly, like. Yeah, there's always guests I'm like, ooh, I want to see them. And then, like, they cancel and I'm all sad about it. But you know what? That doesn't even matter. Like, I get there and I still have a great time, so. Exactly. Uh, I, uh, if you guys want to know who is and who is not coming, you can go to their website. I do believe they have a list of cancellations, but they also have a list of who is going to be there. Yeah, if you Google Denver Comic Con uh, guest list, it'll pull up the first site. So, yeah. it's right there. Um, so, yeah. But make sure you check that out. Um, if you missed out already, the three-day three day passes are gone. The speed passes are gone. So the speed you, passes were gone. Cool. Yeah. So, the rest of them is uh, the single-day passes. Two but, days, yeah. I mean, even if you do just two of the days, that's about the price as one of the, the three days were before you missed out. And I, I feel like... Uh, I feel like in two days you could really get your fill. I mean, mm-hmm. 
we're there we're there to work so like three days is awesome for us because like it is work for us yeah it's two days of work and maybe like four hours on one day to go check stuff out right well exactly and so like for us it's awesome that we can go all three days but like really like if if it comes down to it and you can only get two days like you're totally like it's totally fucking worth it Mm mhm I completely agree. So, I mean, go check it out. It, well worth your money. So, go. Um, it's this June 30th through July 2nd. Next weekend. Next yeah. weekend. I have so much cosplay to work on. <laughs> I have so much work to do in between. <laughs> <sighs> but then I, like, I, just, I took a bunch of time off. Like, that weekend, I'm gone the next weekend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All kinds of craziness. It works. Um, no. It works. Yeah. Um, so coming up next is the Craft Brew. In Ruby. So if you guys notice, uh, right here? No, other way. There we go. That thing. Right there. The bare black. God damn. Bare black. Bare back blonde ale with raspberries. At least you said bare back and not broke back. That's true. (laughs) Um, from Six Nose Brewing. Broke black. (laughs) <laughs> I'm going to stop talking now um, And it is quite delicious So <laughs> It's it's not excessively sweet uh, The tartness is cor- kind of more the prevalent flavor um, On top of everything else It's a filtered beer, low carbonation point Lots of flavor though Um Interestingly, interestingly enough, when I first drank it, I got more raspberry flavors. Um, not like I was being assaulted with it, but more like it—it it was effervescent. It was—it was permeating my my nostrils, and I could really I could taste it a lot. But is now, it, is it tart? Yeah, I mean it's it's tart, but not excessively. Oh, okay. Um, but the more I drink the more I'm actually getting more of a beer flavor. And it's not warming up. I have my ice cube, or my metal ice cube, whatever thing in there. Right. So it's not even a matter of it warming up. It's really, it, it's a complex flavor. So, um, and most fruit beers really aren't. Um, they taste like beer with sugar added. Uh, this one... Right. This well, one... just tastes like juice. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So this one actually tastes... It tastes like what a fruit beer... I imagined should, should be. Tastes like yeah. yeah. So I mean, it's beer and it's fruit. It's not one or the other. So huh. it's nice. it's really tasty. Um, I like it a lot. If you are not a fan of light beers and only do the heavy beer, it's not going to work for you. You're probably not going to enjoy this. If you have a wider palate range and like to try a bunch of different stuff, try a whole bunch of stuff. I mean, see how it's going to taste. So. I think it's uh, pretty darn good. So I'm going to give it a 4 out of 5. So, pretty good score. Um, Mm -hmm. So if you guys are wondering why we rate those things, this thing right there. This right. Untapped. Yeah. Yeah. Sexy. That's the thing. Yeah. We score our beers and we post them all on there. So you guys can follow us on there on Untapped. That's U-N-T-A-P-P-D. It's a website and app where you can score your beers and share your thoughts with others and get great suggestions on beers. So check them out on untapped.com or get the app from the Apple or Android store. Um, So stepping back... Huh? Stepping back to Denver Comic Con. Stepping back to Denver Comic Con, okay. Um, Eric said that Michael Chiklis is going to be there. Nice. That should be interesting. Uh... He's one of those guys that he just looks like a beast. I've never really watched anything with him in it, um, but it's still it, he still seems like one of those people that's still so pronounced in like the acting community. I'd still like to at least see him. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I think it'd be interesting. Um, Eric's obviously excited. So yeah, um, but that's definitely a new update. I hadn't heard about that. <laughs> Mark says. Who needs a bromance when you can have a bowmance? <laughs> a little odd. You're an odd man. I appreciate it. So, um, but yeah. So, was, uh, Michael Chiklis was in uh, American Horror Story. 
Yeah. Yeah. He was the strong man in American mm-hmm. Horror Story. I forgot about that, so thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank yeah. you for bringing that up. So, yeah, I have seen something with him in it. Yeah. Um, um, I was thinking more like the detective show that he's in. Or uh, whatever. Shield or something like that? Yeah. Yeah. Something. But either way. Uh, yeah. He's but, I mean, he has a pretty... Comish. He's yeah, in, he's, he's got been a, a couple. The Shield, the Comish. Yeah, I mean, he's got a prominent acting career, so... Oh, he plays The Thing in Fantastic Four. That's why Eric's so excited about it. Oh, okay. You're gonna go there as The Thing on that day and hang out with him, aren't you? Because that would be awesome. You should. <laughs> <laughs> you should probably also get the inside of your thing signed. The yeah. Thing helmet, not the inside. The, the Thing helmet. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, real quick... While you guys are walking around at uh, con, one of the things that is most tragic is when you drop your phone on the con floor. Yep. Or okay. if you see a awesome cosplay and you can't get your phone out fast enough. Yep. You can go to SoLikeYouKnow.com, click the link, and order your hang-in today. It is that handy-dandy device that allows you to strap your phone to your wrist or neck. Uh, it's easy to find out of your purse with a lanyard. Like, it's super handy, and it's going to prevent your phone from falling to the ground and breaking. Four ninety nine, free shipping. Yeah, so go pick it up. It's worth the money. It's worth the time. Yeah. You'd spend it, it on much it's more so ridiculous handy. things. <laughs> it's so handy. Like, you, you, you really, like, I'm really sad that I don't have mine right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. We'll get you another one. Super handy. Super handy. Yeah. Like, Leggings don't have pockets, ladies. Yeah, yeah. You don't, you don't need a pocket. And if you're streaking, say across like a sports field at a soccer game, pfft, yeah. Where else are you gonna put your phone? Hang around exactly. your neck or your Johnson. <laughs> yeah. Whatever put works. Put it in nature's pocket. <laughs> Anyways, guys. Um, yeah, but go pick up your hangings. Awesome product. Like I said, four ninety nine with free shipping. Totally worth it. Go to our website or Google Hangins. That's H A N G I N Z. So but uh, you know what guys? That's it. Um don't forget we put out new episodes every Thursday at nine thirty Mountain Standard Time, right here on Spreaker.com slash S L Y K radio. And we also do a live feed on Facebook.com slash S L Y K radio. Do you have empty space on your iPhone or Android phone that you're just dying to fill up? Download the Spreaker app and subscribe to our podcast. We've got, or you can, or you can stream us on Stitcher, Smart Radio. We have new shows every Thursday. Thursday. So, like you know, is not responsible for anything. <clears throat> Produced by Slick Solutions, somewhere in Colorado. And so, like you know, is completely whiteless. Just like your opinion. Just kidding. We care. But your government doesn't. True. Never forget. Never forget. Actually, (laughs) I'm going to pause the outro music really quick because I want to tell people about something. I know this isn't normally a political show, but right now, if you text RESIST to 5409, um, right now you can discuss with the senator and who is going to vote tomorrow on Trump Care. So if that is something that matters to you, vote for that. Let them know that you don't want it to pass through. But that's your prerogative one way or the other. Let them know what you think. Be involved even if they don't care. But either way, guys. (laughs) We love you. Have a wonderful night. Yeah. Ninja noises. I'll give her a hot. (laughs) 